Hello everybody once again, this is Kokazu and welcome back to another Maple Story 2 video here. 50 cap has been released and right now the first video I'll make is the level 41 four man party quest which we will be doing a lot for leveling from at least from 41 to 44, possibly 45 if you really don't want to grind. So the first thing that you'll find is leveling from 40 to 41 is a pain in the ass! Okay, but you have to do it because the requirement for doing this party quest is to be level 41. After which you come to the Shadow World via Hennesis, which is right here. You go to the left map, enter through this portal. You'll appear right here. The party quest is here. Alright. Make sure you come inside this house to get a quest from this person, which is about I think three or four uh, chains, and then you'll get a 1.7 million repeatable quest, which you can take again, not at the same person after you hand in, but uh pretty much at the area outside the party quest. So make sure you go to this inn over here and make sure you take the quest, make sure you finish all the chains. The, fi the first chain has to do with the... I'm gonna show you guys very quickly here while moving to the entrance. The first quest will require you to come to this map and you can see this uh, premier... Uh, this triangular looking hill, I'm sick. Sorry if I can't pronounce it properly, but basically you come over here where I can take the, the repeatable quest. They actually went in without me and my party members. It's cool, it's cool. Since the first part is not really a rush. So you come here, you see all these fence chain light looking structures. You can interact with them and you need to, to interact with 10 of them. And then every time you interact with them, a monster will spawn. You kill 10 of those monsters, you hand in the quest. Take the second part, the second part will ask you to come inside the party quest itself. Which I'm going to enter right now. With a bunch of Koreans. You have to save this little kit over here. Alright. So, as usual, quest will be highlighted. The, the, the things that you need to do with quest, or you need to interact with, with quest, will be glowing in red. So you save those two, uh, like you know, slave people, enslaved by monsters, kids, or women, or men. You will complete that part of the quest. You hand in again. It will ask you to come inside, and I believe, I think, it's kill the boss, or something. And then I think there's one more. I can't really remember. But okay, the first part, right? You can see that I actually ignored all the monsters and I jumped. And you can see all these red dots on the map. So you can see that my party members. Uh, split up. I think I need to shift the chat box. Let's put it here. Sorry about that guys. So, you can see there are a lot of the various red dots on the map. Interactables. Is that such a word? So basically you need to find one which spawns one of the slaves. And every time you try to interact with them, a, a piece of flower spawns. So when someone has done that, which is the guy at the bottom right I believe, uh, he actually gets a key. And when that happens, you can see your system notification, a quick one. And of course, you will see that the portal on the minimap will spawn. That's, that actually tells you that someone has gotten the key. So the person with the key will just come and unlock the gate. If you really want the full EXP from every run, you can kill all the monsters, unlock all the interactables. If not, you know, if you just want the EXP, most of the EXP from the party quest comes from the bosses. So the bosses themselves gives about basically a lot of EXP. I'm actually spiking here. So this boss is very simple. So tank and spank. The only thing you need to watch out for is the telegraphs on the floor. But now, where if you stand inside the telegraphs, you will actually be flipped. You know, like a Prata, you'll be flipped and deals a lot of damage. So right now he's not casting it for some reason. Usually he casts it at the start. He has a poison breath that doesn't really kill you. So the only dangerous move here is the Prata flip, you know, I call it the Mizu Eko flip, which is not casting, so hopefully he will cast it one time so that you guys can see. If not, it's a very very simple. Okay, he went berserk, he grew a bit larger, but it doesn't really matter because... Come on, do your Prata flipping skills, dude! This guy is a holo, by the way, you can see that his chest has a hole in it, so for those who watch Bleach, you know, Okay, he's not gonna be able to cast it before he dies. So just watch out. Okay, it's a bit a blackish in color, and it covers a decent AOE around him. If you get hit by that skill, you will get flipped. 
you'll be airborne and you take a lot of damage. So you can actually use potions while you're being flipped. So I would strongly advise you to use your potions when that happens if you do not want to die. If not, you'll be in the dumb ways to die collections of Maple Story 2 and you don't want that to happen to you because there are certainly many many dumb ways to die in Maple Story 2 like falling off a cliff, getting burned to death, that kind of stuff, you know. So this boss, very simple, he'll summon wolves, baby dogs or boo dogs and then father boo dogs and then the boss himself will spawn. So you want to clear this out ASAP because if you don't, they will stack up quite a bit and things might go a bit crazy especially when the daddy bulldogs are out and when the boss spawns, when he comes down from his pedestal looking like a boss he will unfortunately enrage his little pets here the daddy bulldogs and they will become larger so when they become larger they do more damage and they are more dangerous so you want to dispatch of the ads first before you handle the boss. For this party quest, I'll strongly advise having a priest, if not not these bosses that okay you can see the enrich uh or rather the you know steroids for his pets buff is right there. Why are they jumping down? What's going on? Are they trying to test something? I have no idea what the Koreans are saying. I think he said he was AFK. That's the sign for story. But anyways, so you don't want to stand anywhere near the edge of the map because the boss can yup charge and he knocks you down to the magma. The magma actually deals a lot of damage, not your usual burn damage over time. This one actually deals a lot of damage. Let me just show you guys by going in to bathe in the magma. Okay, it's about 46 damage, but you can see multiple ticks very fast. If you are level 41, you probably take more than 41, 46 damage. And if you're not a priest like myself, you might die. But what we know is that the burn do not stack up, unlike the Fire Minotaur uh, in 40 cap, where the duration stacks. So this one doesn't stack, it's just multiple ticks of burn damage. But basically you don't want to stand the H because if you stand the H and he charges you, chances of you being uh, knocked down is a lot more. So at this stage when you cast this skill, right, okay, the poor Corrin has dropped down. He's probably gonna die. Look at him because he got slowed by the charge. And he survives. So you can see here's one way to climb up. If you get knocked down from the left side, you can actually come over here too. So just to let you guys see, do not panic. Use the potions and you you will be Gucci. You'll be fine. So next boss fight, a lot of ads will spawn. Strongly suggest you guys to clear the ads first before releasing the boss by uh interacting with the crystals over there. This monsters actually do decent amount of damage. Anyway, I was saying that you are strongly advised to bring a priest when you're doing this dungeon because the final boss, which is the boss after this stage, deals a uh, high damage uh, skill that possibly one shots you. Actually, yep. If you are not careful, so if you want to save on consumables on potions, you are strongly advised to bring in a priest. Which is why I always level my priest first whenever a new level cap is released. Stock up on consumables. Priests in general are very good for exploration, I guess, of content for Maple Story. Definitely one of the best, if not the best, uh, class for exploration. And I mentioned a lot of times when people ask me about Maple Story 2, every class can be a DPS in Maple Story 2. So right now, however, I am fulfilling my healing duties. I mean, I've done it so well that my party mates actually throw me loot. Like, hey, take this, you know. Hey, take this. This is a priest wand or tome that I just got, you know, that I can't use here. Take this. They actually traded me because I was a a good priest, I would say. Because there are some priests that know that there are DPS or rather, you know, priests can be DPS uh, in Maple Story 2. They just, but to do that, you have to almost totally ignore healing. Or your healing, like you see the laser beam skill, which is one of our strongest nuking skills. 
use it to heal as well as to do damage. But if you have like two range classes, usually that is not possible to happen. So right now I am subjecting myself to my very very you know healing duties that I fulfill diligently. So this is the final boss and you will realize why having a healer is pretty good and you can see we only took about 10 minutes to get here even though we skipped most of the grinding I guess but you can see that the bosses give the bulk of the EXP just like the level 38 4 man party quest when you're at level 40 cap so from what we see right now party quest is definitely the way to go to level and I think the publishers or the Paper Story 2 developers realize that people are not really into the grind like even at 40 cap um, the 38 4 man was the one you do to get from level 38 to 40 fast like you will spend most if not all your 8 keys just to you know level from like 38.4 all the way to 40 because the grind from 38 to 40 is about one and a half hours per level if you are like super focused and it really depends on what class you have and you can find a good group or area that people are leveling so the, the sad thing is 40 to 41 feels like 38 to 40 or rather a level each from 38 to 39 and 39 to 40 in fact it feels worse if I'm not wrong it's about 2 hours per level which is more than 39 to 40 to be honest and that is the very strong nuking skill used on a knight one of the uh, tankiest classes in the game which is why you can see having a preset is good but my point is like right off the bat we can feel the grind when we're at a level, level 44 grinding spot from leveling from 40 to 41 so once you hit 41 you want to do party quest but why you can see that last time the keys the party quest keys were 8 out of 8 so they increased the cap to 10 that's the first thing and the second thing is, for 30 and 40 cap, uh, the key regeneration timing takes 3 hours, but right now it's only 1 hour per key regeneration. So what can you say about that is the developers actually want to reward players that actually only have time to play one character. Like in the past, when it was just 8 keys, right, you see people making multiple characters because they want to you know, grind the purple stones. Sometimes you get uh, equipment uh, for another class when you do party quests that is not yours. Uh, notably, usually weapons and it's quite frustrating even though they actually patched it or changed it in 40 caps such that you have higher chance to get uh, equipment of your own class when killing bosses and party quests. So that has changed. So a lot of good things have happened to Bible Story 2 as the cap is being released and one of them is at 50 caps so they increase the party quest key limit and they decreased the time it takes for a key to regen which ultimately is good which means if I'm not a hardcore grinder like Kazu doesn't have you know 10 hours to play every day since you do this full time you can actually just come into the game spend your 10 keys or more get your levels you need and just get out you know so you still get your fair join of the game uh Quinn basically right now the other patch they did is they introduced normal mode and challenging modes to party quests. So challenging mode is the same difficulty level as what we usually do in the past before that was introduced. And I believe normal mode, which we cannot choose for this party quest because it's a 4-man party quest. I think challenge mode only applies to 10-man uh, party quests, if I'm not wrong. So they want to take away the stress of clearing a party quest. It's like, you know, you want to enjoy doing a party quest, especially the ones that you're leveling with. So they're taking away a lot of stress from the party quest that you are supposed to enjoy instead of, you know, be stressed out, you know, because when there's a requirement or DPS requirement or DPS race requirement for party quest, because there's a time limit, thereby the DPS race comes into play. When we have a very very tight time limit what happens is that people become very selective and finding members and then people that get rejected get very upset and your player base becomes smaller so this is what i mean by the publisher of nexon has done a lot of good stuff to handle but yep that's it for the four men 41 uh level 41 party quest 
in the shadow world. So you're wondering why there's nobody peeping right now, right? It's because this, uh, you can see that this areas are boxed out with this blue outline. It means that they are safe uh, zones in the shadow world. If not, most zones in the shadow world are PvP. So in this map, even if your protective buff uh, bonus thingy that last 10 minutes runs out, you can still, you are still safe from people. Also, they also made new changes where if you are killed by players in the shadow world, you do not actually get soul sickness, so which is a very very good thing. That's what I mean by Maple Story 2 developers changing a lot of stuff that makes the game a lot better. But that's it for me guys, my name has been Aqua Aqua, so thanks for watching once again, God bless! Have fun leveling and I'll see you guys and girls next time. Goodbye. Mm.